Hi, everybody. My name is Danica Joan. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. I have my wonderful co-host, Caroline Rena here. Hey, everyone. So we Hi. can have a conversation. This yeah. is awesome. I had a, so before I went on air, I got a call from my, um, my son, who has a little uh, one-year-old. And he's in breakdown because he's now being the stay-at-home dad and uh, taking care of the baby 24 seven and stuff. And he's, he's calling me and he's like, help, help. I mean, and, and the thing is, is this is like, this has been the whole season of breakdowns. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. I would agree. <laughs> season of breakdowns. Yeah. And then, you know, we don't need to go over all the reasons because I'm, we've heard them too many times in the news and, and in social media and stuff like that. But uh, something that's really, um, on our threshold is, you know, school starting. And I've heard a lot of different things about, um, you know, the pros and the cons and stuff like that. And I have a, a daughter-in-law who's a teacher. And so she's already getting, getting the classroom ready and, and stuff like that. And um, it's, it's kind of, it's a swirl. So, cause I can see it on both sides. Um, I guess my perspective is that if we just completely like shut things down, then we don't, it's like putting our head in the sand and we don't have to come up with a solution. We can just say, you know, we're going to definitely um, put a pause on there. However, I found that when you're going through a breakdown, the, it's, the breakdown is the access to the breakthrough. Yeah meaning that creative solutions have been in the midst of a breakdown. Would you agree? Absolutely. A hundred percent. I would. And I think it's interesting because one of my mantras is break, break down, break through, break free. So it's the freedom on the other side of the breakdown that makes things happen, causes change, changes us, changes our world because we are changing that type of thing. So yeah, absolutely agree with that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's um, and so and in a way when, when you think about all of think creatively, um, you know, the social media is so, you know, us versus them and mm -hmm. nothing meets in between. And I get that as long as we have it, that we're over here and they are over there, then there will be no um, compromise. There will be no solution ultimately because ultimately one person will feel like that they, they got what they wanted and the other person will feel like that they came out the, the powerless loser. Yeah. And this is in every aspect of life. We're not just talking about the circumstance of getting school started and, and all that. But um, I mean, it comes to, also in regards to co-parenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. and there's, there's also like this, this ideology of divide and conquer. If you divide people, you conquer them, and then we, whoever we is gets to be in charge of whatever happens and nobody has a say in anything. And that's really not, we all have a say in, in everything that happens with us in the world, that type of thing. We just get to step into that um, mentality because um, we, for so long, we've been put in those two, two different camps. You know, we've been in the us versus them thing for such a long time, like you say, in every single aspect of, of life that we're ingrained, it's habitual with us now. So if there's something different about somebody else or something else that's going on that we don't like, then immediately it's like, I'm gonna fight you. And that's mm -hmm. not how things work. It just doesn't work. It will never work that way sustainably. It's kind of, it's like the survival of our ego. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times if we can just like be with um, not getting our own way or um, powerfully even choosing the circumstance that we didn't choose, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's, it's yeah. like, it's like resisting. I compare it to having the flu. You know, when you, you didn't, you didn't choose to have the flu, but you've got the flu. There's no like, um, you know, you, you've got all the symptoms of it and you're feeling horrible, but resisting the fact that you have the flu actually make the, makes the symptoms more unbearable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there's, there's this piece of, 
of being human where when you find that point of surrender to whatever is going on in your life for you or with your children or whatever that is, when you're just like, let's just say, um, you know, you're having this crazy day and your kids are running around screaming and you know, whatever that looks like. And then all of a sudden you just sit down and you just say, okay, let them run around you. Let them go screaming around you. Eventually they'll see you. <laughs> they will stop. So when we surrender to whatever is happening in the moment, it seems to bring this sense of um, peace and the energy that goes out makes things shift with that surrender or it helps things yeah. to shift with that surrender. So yeah, that's really, really huge. It's funny though. Um, you said something about, um, what did you say? Um, well, it, do you want to be, most people it's like, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Right? So mm -hmm. I came up with something yesterday while watching a, a course that I'm taking that says, do you want to be right or do you want to communicate? Hmm. Do you want people to hear you? Do you want people to see you? Or do you want to be right about everything? Because when we try to be right about everything, and I'm as guilty as anybody else, guilty as charged, you know, I, it doesn't feel good to me. I want people to hear me, but the only way for me to have that happen for me is to listen mm -hmm. and communicate with other people in an, in, an, in an assertive manner, not in a passive aggressive way, you know? So, um, so that's all important. I mean, that's all falls in with what, with what you're, uh, with what you're saying with things that are happening with schools and, you know, kids and, <laughs> and, you know, and it is about like really understanding. And, and a lot of times you don't have to give up what you're standing for to, mm -hmm. um, to get into the other person's world. This is what I found in working with my coaching clients and, and all that is, if I just listen to them and then I, you know, whatever breakdown they're in the middle of, and I just, and I just like repeat back to them. And I, I get that you are, you just lost your job and you don't know what to do with the children and, and you're in the midst of a divorce. I mean, you, you know, you just in detail, um, go, go back and, you know, and just tell them what they've told you. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a sense of, Oh my God, somebody heard me mm -hmm. and understands me because and understands me. That's and there's that, that release of being heard and being understood yeah. um, that has you let go of your grip to in your attachment to what is so. Right. And most people use that grip to protect themselves from whatever they think is going to happen to them. And nine times out of 10, that thing is not going to happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, worrying is probably one of the most wasted emotions, if you want to call it an emotion that, that I've come across. I, I was like, in, ugh, I was hyper worried about everything and, and just being heard, like you're saying, or people understanding. And, and the point of repeating back to somebody, it doesn't matter what you have to say to other people. It matters because you'll get it a thousand fold in return. It matters how you hear them, how you listen to them. You know, I mean, you could do something as simple. Somebody says, oh my God, I'm having a bad day. Wow, you're having a bad day? <laughs> Just that little statement is like huge for some people, you know? There was, um, yeah, there have been situations where I, what I've caught myself doing, like I'll, I will um, just recreating what, another person has said their communication. Um, and like you said, you may not even agree with what they're saying. So you're, so the typical conversation goes like, you know, um, youth, um, how is it? Um, you made me mad. You did this, this, and this. And then the other person will say, well, I get that you think you, I made you mad. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, break down. That's not going to work. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and just instead of recreating what the communication was, which yeah. is, you know, I get, I heard what you said, that when I um, behave in this certain when way, when I behaved in this certain way, that, that um, its impact on you was that um, you, it, you were upset. Mm -hmm. at me for doing this, this, and this. Yeah. 
There is in, in that whole recreation of the communication, there is no, you know, t uh, I'm not making myself wrong or I'm not taking on the guilt that I don't feel guilty about or anything. You're just recreating their communication. So they really feel heard because I'll tell you what, if they do not feel that you really got their communication, that's when you get the recurring, um, you know, those people, you know, you know how a complaint is persistent. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, God, I've heard you say this a thousand times. Would you stop saying this? Well, if they're saying it over and over again, it's because they don't feel like they've been gotten. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's very true. I, um, I'd like to share a story. Um, when my son and I first got back together again, um, we, this was like, Oh God, it was probably seven or eight years ago, back in 2014, six years, I can't count, six years ago. Um, and we went to a personal development course where they literally set us up in this, in this situation where they had us facing each other and there was a therapist that was sitting next to each other or sitting next to us. And I remember that the, the goal for this um, thing that we were, that we were about to do is that he could talk as long as he chose to, and I would have to listen and repeat verbatim every single solitary word that he said. And I'm like, and back then I wasn't that great of a listener. So, and I knew that I needed to do it because it was first, his first opportunity to say something to me. This is my experience. I don't know what his experience was, but this was mine. And I'm sitting there and I'm listening so hard so I could remember everything that he is saying and not thinking, I was not thinking at all. That was the key. It was like, normally when someone's talking to us, we've got all these other things in our heads and we're thinking about the next thing to say or next thing to come back at them with or whatever that is. And I was like, nothing is in my head. And I'm thinking, I'm not thinking. Now I'm thinking, oh my God, <laughs> that's a new one, right? So he started, I mean, it was probably, it felt like 10 minutes, but it was probably maybe a minute, a minute and a half at the most. And he starts telling me these things about how he was feeling and all this stuff. And I had to repeat it back and I nailed it. I got every single thing and I could see his face shift with like this look like, oh my God, she heard me. And it helped me because I needed to know that I could do that for him, especially, or anyone. And, but let me tell you what, it's a challenge. I mean, we're not taught to learn to, to listen to people. We're taught to talk over people. And I don't like that. And I used to, um, and I knew I did it, but I didn't like it anyway, you know, and I used to do a, a, a little like talking circle for people, a Native American talking circle where you use a talking stick. I use a talking stone. You, I think you know what I'm talking about, Danica. And you just pass that object around. And the person who's holding that object is the only person who's allowed to talk. And everybody else in the room has to listen and, and not think about the next thing they're going to say and just put all their focus and all their attention and all their love on the person that's talking. And once, the, once those things are done and you talk about how everybody was listening, everybody says the same thing. It's like, oh my God, I felt like I was important. I felt like I was heard. I felt like people were seeing me. I felt like everything I had to say was worth it, that I was worth it, you know? And what that does for people, you can, you can even do that. I, 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 I'm going to say this, you can even do it with your ex-spouse because yeah. if you act like you hear them and you're listening to them they will settle they won't resist they're not going to fight you i mean there's i'm sure there's some out there that will but there are situations where that could happen practice just listen to them and hear what they have to say you don't have to agree with them just let them talk and just say oh yeah okay yeah yes so, yeah i love so. it <laughs> And it's interesting, it's the, the emptiness you were talking about in your head. And, and it was few, several years ago when I started meditating, which was very difficult. Um, the, uh, it was kind of like uh, Julia Roberts in Eat, Pray, Love, and how she got, which was so antsy and wiggly uh, yeah. when she first started trying to meditate and then she, she embraced it. Yeah. Um, and it's it the surrender. I don't mean to surrender. interrupt, it was the surrender right there. Okay. <laughs> 
And, and it's because they, they're, we've been taught, especially growing up, especially if you've not been taught, like grown up in the practice of meditation, um, it's all about cramming your head with more and more and more content. I am a, I'm a, like a uh, learning junkie. I love to learn more and more and more self-help and all that. And you cram your head full of this stuff, but ultimately there, there's a, a space where if you can somehow have nothing going in your head and it takes a long time. Um, I have a friend of mine uh, that we, we talked about like the difference between prayer and meditation. And I said, well, you know, prayer in the, in the traditional sense of the word, um, was me telling God, telling the universe what my thoughts were. <laughs> and meditation is about being silent in your head so that you can hear what God has to say to you. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I that one. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Um, so it's really, um, and something that Carolyn and I were talking about off air was uh, evolving more kind of getting, giving you a little, an opportunity to be coached on air. Um, because we really do believe that the answer to shifting the consciousness of the planet or, the, or shifting things in the family system is not necessarily doing the whack-a-mole kind of thing. I love using the whack-a-mole analogy because it's like, this is wrong, boom, this is wrong, boom, we're going to squash out this. Well, that, that, that hasn't worked, hasn't worked for at least 20 years and even more. Um, and the, I think for us, it's empowering people, empowering the parent, uh, to and also empowering the parents so that they that fear and anxi anxiety quiets quiet because if you have if you eliminate fear and anxiety um, now you're grounded and you can start really stepping into your power mm -hmm. and understand that a lot of that is all within you um, you just need maybe a little a coaching or assistance so to to find that in you. And yeah. if you have the power, I always, I always say this um, with some, with my clients, I said, you know, um, people don't get that you don't need an attorney to have it, to get a divorce. I'm not saying that they're not valuable, but you do, it's like, you don't really need an, uh, a realtor to buy a home and yet they are valuable. Mm -hmm. um, so if you had the, if you were empowered to uh, be able to go into this situation with tools and strength. Um, what a better outcome. And yeah. I know you and I, we've both uh, coached people through their divorces. And I would assert that I know within my cases, they've gotten done quicker and with better outcomes. And it's not just that they won and the other person lost. No, it's like, it's a, it's like everybody wins. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what's interesting here though, is, I mean, we're both coaches, but we both do two different types of coaching, but in my mind, they kind of blend together because you do, what do you call it? Is it, do you call it divorce coaching or? Yeah. Divorce like, coaching. You, you, edu coaching. you help educate them. You help them with their custody. You help them with all that stuff. So, and I, my work is um, like spiritual life leadership coaching, which digs into the, the underlying things that are causing you to feel anxious and all that stuff and learning how to, um, through tools, through understanding, through knowledge, whatever, whatever it takes, um, to release that stuff. So you can focus on the things that you need to accomplish, whether it is a court hearing or it is dealing with your kids or whatever that is, because you're more centered. You don't go into, um, you know, obsessing uh, about, you know, why is, why is this happening over here, blah, 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 when you've got all these things that you can focus on and, and being able to heal from that stuff to focus. In fact, the work I do to help you in that focus can help you focus, can help with Danica and help her to help you focus on the things that you need to do with the courts, with the children, with, you know, all that kind of thing. So I see it working really well together 
in yeah. moving you forward, giving you the tools, giving you the understandings and that type of thing. So, you know, I mean, in my, I love this idea, Danica, because I think that there's even, you know, even if it's like uh, little opportunities to solve one thing or, you know, whatever, because right now there's so much information, like you're saying, going on in all of our heads. And if we can narrow that down to find that point of focus and that because, so we don't get overwhelmed and all this kind of thing, which is normal for <laughs> um, an erased parent um, and normal for the, us going through court and all that stuff. So it, it's a huge, huge opportunity. I'm like so excited to do this with you and with the rest of the team. And, and the yeah, rest. I mean, it's, it, the thing is, is the, the, the principles or the distinctions uh, around being coached and stuff like that, these are things that can carry you beyond a custody battle. Mm -hmm. um, these are things, these are skills that I've developed and now I'm there as a sounding board for my own children. Mm -hmm. um, and if I can shine the light uh, for them to navigate through these, you know, difficult times, then it, there it goes, it in, impacts people generationally. Yes. 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 So everything that you do to help yourself, putting the air, going back to the air mask again on the airplane, everything that you do to help yourself will in turn help anyone around your circle and it will connect with, you know, generations back and forward. I don't know how that works, but it just does. I love, yeah. I mean, and it's not the easiest thing in the world to work through some of this stuff. And it's, for me, sometimes it's been painful and exhilarating at the same time. I mean, if you, and I've said this a million times, if you saw me when everything started 20 years ago, I was on the floor in my house, my, my ex had just left with the children, the blinds are all shut, it's dark black, and I'm screaming and crying on the floor. I called it, well, you've heard this, I've called, I called it a dark night of the soul. Now, that person there would not be sitting here had I not done what I did. And I can, I'm pretty sure that um, you could say the same thing or something similar. And I took that phrase, by the way, because I just, um, my, I, I'm a contributing, a contributing author in a book compilation, and it's going to be printed, it should be published by October. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was one of the phrases, it was basically telling my story. Um, and of course, I'm not about, you know, it's important to me, no matter what I do, whether we do Custody Matters Live or whether I write an author a book or whatever, that there has to be positive outcomes because there's just no, um, there's no point in putting, in regurgitating more to toxic things out mm -hmm. into the universe. So yeah. Um, yeah, the book talks about, I did mention the dark night of the soul where I was in the fetal position, just sobbing and mm -hmm. until I had no more tears. And, um, but there's really always a light, <laughs> huh? Is it, it works, that, that's what it is, it works that way. It gets all that out, it gets all that energy out and then it, it makes room for something better to come in. And, yeah. and it's hugely important, you know, to do that. And what I'd like to clarify too, is that, you know, years and years ago, um, the, the movie, um, The Secret came out and it was very difficult for me when I saw that. I love the movie, don't get me wrong. It was a great movie, but it was like all these, you know, visualizations and um, all these great things to say about myself. And what, what do they, what do they call, um, affirmations and all this stuff and I'm like saying all this stuff and my inside of me my little girl's going no no that's not true that's not true stop it you know and for years that happened and then it, I got to the point where I realized that in order to get to the place where you can affirm and grow and move there's a pieces of you inside that need to be healed yes and need to be released and need to be integrated. And once that happens, it's like, you know, I mean, look at us. This is so cool. Cause I get, because yeah. you obviously just said it 20 years ago, if you and I were sitting here, we'd be like, ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's so important. I mean, I can't even yeah. say this enough. It's so important to take 
take yourself into consideration and do something about healing and learning or, or not learning, but um, focusing and moving forward and releasing and all this, all this great stuff. That's the dark night of the soul. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, uh, so as we, it's, this has been a, just a great organic journey um, mm -hmm. in doing custody matters live, I believe, you know, I've been doing it for about three years. I can't remember. I've lost track, but um, it's definitely taken a lot of turns. And, um, and I think this is going to be, this is a new turn that we're taking is, um, yeah, we will bring on experts and interview them uh, because it's very important for, to, to expand the community and expand your exposure to the community that we um, connect ourselves with. However, if you are interested and um and you have the courage we all have the courage if you want to put yourself out there for a 15-minute coaching session with the, with caroline and me um we will pre-record it so you know um and uh, before airing it i think that's just being responsible um, but the viewers will get so much out of you discovering something for yourself um, so it's, it's kind of a win-win. So anyway, so contact yeah. us, reach out to us and say, you know, and, and let us know that you'd be interested in, um, being coached, um, on air and, um, and we'll b get back with you. Yeah. And I, um, as far as contacting, you probably message us in, uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. yes. Probably the best contact I'm thinking right now. Cause we really, we really just thought of this like right before we came on. So this is how organic it is. So we're going to yes. do this and we're going to provide this, but right now the only access is, is messenger. <laughs> That's the best way. I mean, I do have a form. I do have a, a prospective like guest form that I have uh, had people fill out and stuff like that. I'll modify it a little bit. Um, and of course, if we, um, you are selected to be on to do some coaching and stuff. We'll go over, you know, the do's and the don'ts, um, just, um, and we'll go from there. But anyways, you got anything else, for, uh, Caroline? No, I don't. I just, the only thing I say is just, just keep the peace inside of yourself the best you can. Take deep breaths. <laughs> you know, the stuff's going on and the more we breathe, the more we can handle it uh, from my own experience. So that's probably the only thing I've got right now. <laughs> and it, this was such a departure from the original topic we talked about. We talked about going back to school and, yeah. and everything. We just, we totally went on a rabbit trail, but I think this was very valuable for someone who's, who's watching um, that this probably was more valuable than to regurgitate um, what we already know about schools starting yeah. and stuff. So bring um, through that too. <laughs> well, so, um, all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for yeah. another Custody Matters Live. Um, and I will, you have a great weekend and we'll see you again next week. Okay. Take care.